Jamaican professor Kevin Fenton is the second most influential black person in the UK, in the entire United Kingdom. This is according to the 2021 BBC Power List. He is the Public Health Regional Director for London. Um, and he's penciled out some time out of what must be a very busy schedule uh, to talk to us this morning. Afternoon on his side, 1.20-ish. Hello there, Prof. Good, good afternoon to you. Well, good, good morning to you and good morning to all your viewers. It's such a pleasure to be able to join you this it's, morning. It's good to have you. Congratulations. What a huge honor this is. Lovely. Thank you so much. You know, it's been um, such a tough year with the pandemic. And so to be recognized in this way is both is, is just very special. So tell me, a little, tell me a little yeah. bit about how you were chosen. What's the criteria that goes into yeah. this? So the power list is an annual, annual listing of uh, people of African heritage, uh, black British people from the diaspora who are contributing in very special ways to the society here in the UK. And it includes scientists, artists, sports people, people from all walks of life. So it's a list drawn up every year. And last year I entered and I was uh, second after Lewis Hamilton. So that was quite, quite an honor. Nice. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your, your Jamaican ties. You did quite a bit of work here before you left us um, to go abroad. Actually, let me see, you were born, you were born in, in Scotland, right. am I right? Yeah. So you're a Scotlandish Jamaican, is that right? I don't know. <laughs> That's right, my, my <laughs> parents were studying uh, in, uh, in the UK. I was born there and then I returned uh, to Jamaica when I was probably very, very young, but you know, before two years old. So I did primary, secondary, and UE uh, education in Jamaica before returning to the UK. And I've been based in London now for the past two decades. I mean, you, you studied first as a computer science major. You later graduated with an MD from UE. Um, elected class president for the 85 to 86 school year. And you completed your residences at Cornwall Regional in Mobe and at the university hospital um, here in Jamaica. So when you left us, what year was that when you left us? To I go... left in about 1992, when okay. I was college to study my master's in public health at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And that's where my love for public health really started. Okay. Uh, okay. So tell us about some of the programs that you've worked in, because you've worked in some really big program, public health programs across the UK. We're talking about um, being advisor for HIV, sexual and reproductive health. Um, you've worked on programs that include screening for cancer and other conditions. Tell me a little bit about what your job and your role entails, because it's so wide and vast. Yeah. So public health is that branch of medicine that's really interested in improving the health and well-being of populations. So as a physician, rather than treating one person at a time, I work with governments to really improve the health of populations and communities. And over the years, I've had the privilege of holding senior roles both in infectious disease prevention and control, as well as uh, responding to chronic diseases, including hypertension, diabetes, mental ill health, and obesity. Okay. And over the past year and a half, I've been the uh, public health director for London, leading the public health response to the coronavirus pandemic in the city. So it's been a, a real journey over the past two and a half decades. I really want to talk to you about this last year and a half there, Prof. How did you have to pivot, twist, turn, re-strategize, re-prioritize? Because none of us had ever seen anything like this before. And your That's role would have been so instructive in leading the fight. I mean, how, how's the UK doing now, first of all? But how was your, your role in kind of you know, ensuring you got to a point where, um, where you are now. Yeah. So, you know, this isn't my first pandemic because I started my career working on the HIV AIDS pandemic. So a lot of the lessons from that, I think, were applicable to the coronavirus pandemic. Currently, the UK is doing well or yeah. rates are low. Um, and today is an important day for the country because we go to the next step of unlocking from the restrictions that we've been in since uh, the new year, really. And what does that look like? 
Um, so now bars and restaurants are now open. You can eat indoors. You can meet more people indoors as well as outdoors. So a really important point for us. And of course, travel is beginning to open up again, international travel. So lots of, of things being introduced today. But at the same time, remember we have the new variant first described in India, which is also spreading in the UK. And we have our vaccination rates and we're really working to drive those rates up across the country. So a lot happening in the space and, and London has been sort of the center of a lot of this activity as well. Is that the B117? Is that what it's called? Well, the B117 uh, is the Kent variant, which is the one that really affected us in the Christmas of last year. Uh, now we're dealing with B167.2, which is the variant from India. Oh, which is the mercy. So let me ask you, Prof, trust me, I mean, every day you hear another story about another variant, but you are moving to the next stage of unlocking. This thing is really about balance, eh? While you deal with this new variant, you're opening up, you see what's going on in the US with the, with the opening up um, and the discussion about to mask or not to mask. How do you know if somebody who walks into your establishment while you are fully vaccinated and unmasked is in fact vaccinated? So what's the guidance that you've been giving um, folks in the UK with regard to how you open up and the wearing of masks? So what we're really pushing is that with these rights come responsibilities. So the more that we're able to open up the city, the responsibilities that we all have are to get vaccinated, to continue to practice the preventive measures of you know, keeping your hands clean, covering your face if you're in a crowded space, and keeping, if you're indoors, ensuring that your rooms are well ventilated as well. So now is more, it's very important that yes, we unlock, but yes, get vaccinated and continue to practice all of the pre pre prevention measures, which we know works to stopping transmission of the virus. And I'm also curious, which vaccine did you all use to kind of crush COVID? Uh, so we have two vaccines, which are the, one, the main ones which we use. So those are the AstraZeneca, the Oxford AstraZeneca and the Pfizer vaccine. We also have access to uh, smaller amounts of other vaccines. But the regulator here in the UK continues to approve new vaccines. So I anticipate that by the autumn, uh, that we'll have a range of vaccines available and we'll probably be vaccinating more of the population as well. So right. young people uh, as well. I asked you specifically because I know there's so much debate around AZ and what it can and cannot do, but you guys have had great results with it. Um, so, yeah, I'm just we have. And I, I always say, you know, whichever vaccine you're offered first, take it, right? Because the government, your regulatory agencies will ensure the vaccine is safe for you. Don't wait for a choice because that choice may never come. So take the vaccine, the first one offered to you when you can. I was very happy to take my AZ. So um, thank you for that, Prof. We're going to wrap it up, but can you tell me if there's anybody here at home that you would like to say hi to before we go? Oh, absolutely. Now, there's, uh, my, to my parents, Carmen and Sydney Fenton, and my sisters, Kim, Keisha, who live in Jamaica and their families. Um, and, you know, all my fantastic classmates from UE Medical Class 1990, who I know are doing fantastic work with other doctors in the Caribbean to really help to respond to this pandemic. Fantastic. Well, Prof, keep safe uh, and you. keep making us proud. We are very proud of you. Prestigious honor. And we know you'll go on to get more. <laughs> Thank you so much. BBC's uh, Powerless, second most influential black person in the entire UK, Public Health Regional Director for London, Professor Kevin Fenton. That's it for that. News is up next. So Shane has your um, second dose of that ready for you. So stick around for it, please. <laughs>